Welcome back. It's time now for Media Watch, and the man with the laptop is back, James Creedon. Good evening to you, evening, sir. Chris. Uh, we're going to start off with, I find this all quite scary, frankly. It's called <laughs> the Face Deals cameras. They recognise you as you wander into shops using your Facebook photos. There's nowhere to hide Big Brother anymore. is with us. There's nowhere to hide. Uh, a company called Red Pepper is behind this. Let's roll some of the pictures of what you could be seeing at a shop near you soon. A Face Deal camera. Uh, so Red Pepper has come up with this face deal camera. They say it's no direct link to Facebook, even though it uses Facebook as an application. The idea is you're walking into a shop, it uses your Facebook profile and a likeness to it uh, to recognize you. Facebook, since last year, have been using facial recognition technology for people to identify, so you can identify your friends on Facebook or they can identify your friends for you, I suppose the point being. Then, of course, if you're recognized, you have to sign up for this, by the way, this whole face deal thing. And if you do, you might get a special offer if you go into a shop or you'll get offered a discount, which is all very nice and all very well, but what about Big Brother and all the rest It makes of it rice? slightly less scary, I suppose. Some <laughs> people have said it's a bit like Minority Report. That's exactly it. Um, a, a, a number of articles I read online today said that there, there are similarities to Minority Report, uh, a book which was adapted into a movie with Tom Cruise. I think we have some of the pictures. There's one scene where he walks into a shopping centre and it's quite the interactive experience. His cameras use eye retina or iris scan technology to customise advertisements and he's, you know, even, he's even called out to in the movie by various brands. So is that where we're heading? I suppose that's the question. Is that what we're moving to? Some sort of bizarre, futuristic it's world? Bizarre, where... brand heavy, big brother world. Yeah, <laughs> scary there, stuff. Absolutely. There, but there are other ways to recognise you uh, and for people there to are, money there, out of it. There are indeed, but just before, and I'll just show you Facebook online. There's one, uh, there's one uh, aspect to this that is quite interesting. Last year, they got in a lot of trouble for rolling out this face, facial recognition technology. Uh, without telling users, right? So this is an, an article in the Daily Telegraph from June of last year. They got into a whole lot of trouble. And since then, it's been kind of ongoing. And in Germany, actually, earlier this week on Wednesday, a court in Hamburg has decided to open a, pr a privacy investigation because with this facial recognition technology, which they kind of bought up uh, from an Israeli company last year, uh, they quite probably have a database of everybody's photo uh, with the name, etc., etc. And this, of course, is perhaps against privacy laws, certainly in Germany, where privacy uh, legislation is quite advanced. So there is an investigation being opened up in uh, Germany. So perhaps Face Deal won't be operating in Germany if uh, they have to delete that database at some point in the future. If Facebook doesn't get you, sound waves might, though. That's right. This was in Mashable, the tech website. I spotted this uh, during the week. Are sound waves the future of mobile marketing? Now, the idea here is uh, that um, ba basically it's Sonic Notify is, is the technology. It uses sound waves, uh, uh, you know, if you if, through radio, etc., to Identif it's, if you're, let's say, in a supermarket and you're in the dairy aisle, uh, you could get a little message on your mobile saying, buy this brand over that brand. <laughs> also, you have to sign up for it. So either, it, whether it be via facial recognition or sound waves, they're going to get you somehow to buy their product. But you have to agree to it first. Gosh, OK. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, France's best-selling philosopher, uh, Bernard-Henri uh, Levy, the man... Yes. Uh, some people have credited with persuading Nicolas Sarkozy to get involved uh, in Libya, has yes. been speaking out about Syria now. Yeah. That's right. I think we have pictures of, Li of Libya last there, year. Oh, there, there he is, is uh, yeah. in situ. He's he, a stylish man. He is a stylish man, a bit of a quiff and always a few buttons opened. And there he is in Benghazi. And he spoke to Nicolas Sarkozy at the time. And he claims that he was very influential in getting Sarkozy um, to, you know, call for intervention, I suppose. Now he is doing the same thing again with Syria. So and with less success, I got it. With less success. He called, uh, he wrote a, a, an article in Le Monde uh, newspaper here in France on Wednesday saying that basically Alep or Ale Aleppo in Syria today is the same as Benghazi. Yesterday, the Syrians are calling for intervention. We need to intervene. He also said on RMC radio during the week, Francois Hollande, are you, I would, it would be great if you would receive me if we could have a meeting. Francois hasn't actually replied yet, or President Hollande hasn't replied yet. But in his lieu, you have this guy, uh, Laurent Fabius, the foreign minister, who pointed out that he's actually friends with, uh, with <laughs> Bernard Henri de Vie. There's a photo of them, uh, Bernard in fine, shirt open yes. style there. Now, uh, France, uh, Fabio said on the radio this morning, listen, the two countries, totally different situations. The UN has not called for intervention. That is the big difference between Syria and Libya. And uh, so he, you know, he said, look, you know, we're, we're not going to intervene just because a philosopher said it's a good idea. I think I may be paraphrasing. This is France. <laughs> Philosophers hold a lot of sway. They can tell presidents what to do. This is it. James Creedon, that was Media Watch. Thanks, Thanks very much for joining us.
Do stay with us here on France Van Cat. More world news coming up very shortly. Join us for this week's health show on alcoholism, starting with the pill that may just be the 21st century's greatest tool to overcome alcoholism. We speak to existing users of the drug Baclofen who are already convinced of its remarkable effects. Don't miss Health, Sunday 11.45am Paris time on France 24.